Amen. I want to go ahead and take a couple of minutes to just share with you about worship. You can go ahead and be seated. And uh, we'll go back into uh, I Exalt Thee. We'll, go, we'll hit that when we uh, go through this. But today, uh, I'm just going to, we, we just decided coming in here uh, this morning that uh, we wanted to really focus on worship and just leave this time available. I'm actually not going to preach a message. I'm just going to share like a little devotional. Hopefully, it'll give you some inspiration to worship the Lord. But before we do that, David, thank you for playing, man. Thank you. Uh, before, before we do that, we just came out of a, a celebration or a holiday of Thanksgiving. And many times we can say, oh, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful to, uh, for this. And I think we need to make sure that we give honor to where honor is due. And we're thankful to whom, who has given to us and what he's right. And so I just want you, as David plays for a minute, would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes and would you just give some thanks to the Lord? Would you name out some things that you're thankful for that the Lord has either done or he's given you? You just say, Lord, I give you thanks for, and you, would you just share it? And let's, let's give him thanks today. Let's give him credit. She shared that scripture that says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We thank him for what got us here. Give him thanks today for what got you here. Lord, we're thankful for what you've given us, Lord. And I, Lord, your word says that give thanks in all circumstances for this is your will in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we just give you honor and we give you thanks today for what you have given us, Lord, and what you have done. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to just share for a few minutes on worship. And team, you can go ahead and maybe grab a seat or so. I'm, like I said, I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to share a couple of things. I brought out my... Uh, my old Bible that when I um, when, when I bring this Bible out, it just is kind of uh, just reflects or reminds me of just the, my soul and how much uh, God's word, uh, how I need God's word. And I'm going to say this, that you can't worship without God's word. You can't worship without God's word. It's his word that that fuels our worship and what he says and what we find out about God. And uh, this Bible I've had for uh, decades now, I can say that. And it's I mean, it is used up. I mean, you can see it is used up, and uh, that you heard the saying. But you heard the saying before that if you have a, a Bible that's messed up, usually ha you have a life that isn't. And uh, you know, this is a Bible that I use. We have our family devotions once a week, and I, I pull out this Bible. This is just my soul. And and today I wanted to uh, share with you just a couple of things about worship and worshiping in advance. Everyone say advance. And uh, it's important for us to understand what worship is so that we, we know moving forward how to worship and what is worshiping the Lord. Now, we just came out of a time of thanksgiving, and it is a time to give thanks to God. Worship is not a time to give thanks to God. I want, I want, to, I want to show you something. Worship is not giving thanks to God for what he's done. We give thanks and we uh, praise God for what he has done, but we don't worship what he's done. We don't worship, if we worship in the past and we worship what he's done, then we worship results. We're worshiping results. He doesn't want us to worship his results. He wants us to be thankful for them. He wants to, us to praise him for him. But we worship him for who he is. That's what we worship him for what's moving forward. And, and, and because we don't worship the results, we worship who he is, and it's a matter of focus that I have a lot of alternatives in my life, but I give my allegiance to the Lord, my God, my Savior, my King, my Master, my Deliverer, my Redeemer. I give all of my worship to him. I stand allegiant to him, that he is my God. And I don't sit here and worship results and all God has done. I don't worship those because then all I want is results from God. When really the truth is worshiping and moving and, and advancing in worship is all about who God is and not what he's done. And I just want to share something from the Old Testament. And if you have your Bibles, you can open up or it'll be on the screen and and uh, I just want to share something from the book of Exodus. And then we're going to go right back into, into worship here. 
And it's helping us to understand moving forward and worshiping in advance when nothing has been done. When it's all about just who God is and what God says and nothing has been done, we just simply worship him and we say, God, I'm submitted and I'm committed to you. And we see here in this scripture, this is where God is now speaking to these Israelites. They were in captivity in, in Egypt for 400 years. And then now he wants to lead them into the promised land, land. And then he starts telling them, this is what needs to happen moving forward to get you from here to there. And so they, uh, they come out of this uh, time and he's telling them this, that don't be like this, don't be like these people, you're going to confront these issues, you're going to have problems. How many of you know in life you're going to have some problems? There's going to be some st things that stand in your way, there's going to be some obstacles that are there, but we need to know how to move through those times and God directs them. And I want you to see this and uh, you can follow along on the screen, I want to highlight a couple things that hopefully will motivate you and inspire you in your worship and worshiping in advance. He says this in verse uh, 24. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. This is a, he's referring to the other nations and the people that they're going to confront and they're going to go through. They're going to have trials and, and difficulties. And so these people are ones who have pagan gods and don't practice things of God. They're God haters. And he's saying, look, don't practice like them. Don't live like them. See, when you are not a worshiper of God, you have to be careful that you're probably going to practice a lot of things that the world does. You're probably going to practice things out of fear. You're going to practice things out of lust. You're going to practice things out of pride. You're going to practice things out of envy. You're going to be practicing probably a lot of those things. And he's saying, look, don't let that be the way you live. And then he goes into the next verse. And it says this. See, I lost my spot. Got all excited. It says, do not bow before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. This would be figurative for us that we would say, not only am I not going to do that, I'm going to cut them off. There's no chance I'm going there. Verse 25, it says, worship the Lord your God. Don't do it. Now worship the Lord your God. Give allegiance to and commitment to and honor to and side with God in everything. Because then what happens is when we worship God, then there are no alternatives. There are no other ways. I'm not going to be swayed because this is the way I'm going to go. And then he tells them this when they worship the Lord your God. It says, and his blessing will be on your food and water. That God is going to give you plenty and more than enough, your resources, you're going to be nourished, and God is going to use that to help you. You're going to have plenty. It says this, I will take away sickness, that God is a God who heals. From among you, and none, uh, from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. Back in these times, to be barren or miscarry was like a, a disgrace, a dishonor. And uh, you wanted to live a legacy. And I want to say this, is that when we worship the Lord your God, parents, I want you to hear this. When we worship the Lord our God with our lives, we begin to leave a legacy of faith. We begin to leave a legacy in our kids and the, and the name that they live for. And they don't live barren. They live full because they know who the Lord their God is. The generations that follow. This is what happens when you worship the Lord. And it says, and in your land, I will give you a full life span. Living a full life isn't about how many years. It's not about how much quantity. It's about how much quality. And you can live a full life and pass away at 54. And you can live a full life. And you can live a full life and pass at 94. But you can also die at 94 and not have a full life, the kind of full life that God wants. And when we worship God the way he wants, and, and we honor him, and we worship who he is. That's where a full life begins to take place. And then verse 27, it says, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. This is what favor looks like. He says that I'm going to do ahead of you. You're not going to have to go through it. When you worship me, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come. I'm going to go before you and you're going to have favor. And those who wanted to resist you, they're going to sense and they're going to know the presence that I am with you. And they're not going to be able to stand against you. They're going to move away from you when we worship the Lord our God. Verse 28, he says, and I will send the hornet. And the hornet is, a sim is symbolic 
of uh, confusion. And I will send the hornet ahead of you. Everyone say ahead of you. To drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites, and the Cellulites. Some of you are like, amen, drive them out. Drive them out. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are like, man, I didn't know that was in the Bible. See, I got lost when I did that. He said, I'll drive them out of your way. Verse 29. I want you to hear this. This is going to be a, a good faith lesson right here. But I will not drive them out in a single year because. I want you to worship the Lord your God, but I will not do this right away. Some of us may get into a place to where we're worshiping God and like, God, I'm doing this. Why isn't this happening right now? Why I, I did this and it's not happening. And, and see, he says, I'm not going to do it in a single year. It's going to be a, in, in a process. And I want you to see this. is because God wants us to be established into a lifestyle of worshiping him. That it is an instant. It is something that becomes part of our lifestyle to where I am naturally a worshiper of God. This is who I am. I'll drive it out. Don't worry. Things aren't going to go right away. But I've got a purpose and I've got a plan. And we need to be okay with the because. I'm not going to do it in a single year because. And I want you to follow this here. It says this. The land would become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Because God's protecting us from some things when he's also giving us and establishing a lifestyle of worship. And then verse 30, it says, little by little. It's in the little by little that our faith has grown, not in the immediate. I'm preaching right now. I, it's in the little by little that our faith grows as we worship who God is and not worship the results. And he says this, little by little, I will drive them out before you in advance, before you, we worship in advance, until you have increased enough to take possession of the land, the promised land. I want you to see this. God is not trying to get it ready for you. He's trying to get you ready for it. The promised land and the future and the things that God has designed and prepared for you and, and all the goodness and the life, the fulfilling life that you desire and wondering, why am I here? What am I living for? Where am I going to go? My life seems like a dead end. You know what he's saying? What I'm doing right now is I want to create a lifestyle of worship inside of you. And I'm going to increase your strength. And the more that I increase your strength in worship, the more that you begin to claim in the promised land. And that's why we worship God for who he is. It's not about results. It's not about what you give me. It's all about who God is. And God is for me. And I worship in advance. I'm not worshiping what I got. I'm not worshiping because when I worship what I got, then I begin to beg and get upset when God doesn't give me what I need. So I'm going to be satisfied with living a lifestyle that is worshiping the Lord, my God. And you are the Lord. I worship who he is. I worship him as my deliverer, as my savior, as my master, as my king. I am nothing without God. I have no life worth living. He is my life. He is everything, and I worship the Lord alone. And all these things that I shared with you, all these things begin to happen when we just put God first and we worship him in advance. I want to give you an idea of what this looks like, and then we're going to go into this song of we exalting. And our worship team, you guys can go ahead and come back up. I told you this would be quick. I'm a 49er fan. And... Right now, some of you non-Christians don't need to be saying anything negative about the 49ers. We're about to be homeless in a couple weeks, but whatever. There's a lot going on, a lot of drama. But um, many times, uh, I'm not going to get home in time to be able to watch the game. And so I go ahead, and like many of you, you set your, you set your video up to record it. And so I get home, and I'm able to watch it. Sometimes I'm able to catch up, and I didn't miss the whole entire game. And then sometimes I'm so late, I just have to watch the game all over. 
or watch a game and I don't know the score, but there are those times where someone may say, or I may find out what the score of the game was at the end, and I find out who won and who lost. Now, something I've noticed when I'm watching the game and I know the score is I'm a little more at ease. When I don't know the score, I'm a little more fidgety. I mean, I'm like watching, and when they're running, I'm kind of leaning, you know, like, I don't know about anybody else, or I'm kind of like kicking my leg is up, or I'm, doing, I'm biting my nails, or, you know, I'm shouting, I'm jumping, and I'm, I'm on edge because, you know, I'm all in this thing, and I don't know who the winner's going to be. And so I'm back and forth, but there's something about when I know who the winner is that I'm a little more at ease because I know in the end they're going to win out. And I want you to see this. We know who the winner is, and we worship the winner. And when I worship the winner, it doesn't matter the ebbs and flows, the highs and lows in life. I worship who the winner is because God wins in the end, and that's all I need to know. It doesn't matter about how many field goals, how many touchdowns, how many extra points, how many safeties. It doesn't matter those things. What matters to me is, is that God wins in the end, and that is the only time that I worship. I don't care about the results and what happens here. What I care about is who he is and my destiny and the life that God has for me. That's what I worship. And so when we come in and worship, yes, worship. Thank God for what he's given and praise him for what he's given. We will enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. I'm going to thank him for what got me here. But I'm going to worship who he is and where he's going to take me. And so I want you to just stand with me. We're going to go into this song of we exalt thee. If you don't know this, thee is that King James version of, that, of you. We exalt you. We exalt you above everything. I just want you to close your eyes for a minute. And today what I want you to do is I want you to put everything aside. All the great blessings of God that he's given, that's great. Put those aside for a minute. All the struggles, all the challenges, all the difficulties, would you put those aside for a second? And would you just say, God, I just want to worship you for who you are. You are my winner. You are my savior. You are my Lord. You are, my, you are my life preserver. You are my hope in a time of fear. You are my strength when I am weak. You are my confidence. You are the joy and the lifter of my head. I worship you. You are my life. You are the one who lifts up my soul. You are my leader. You are my friend because I do what I, I, I follow you, Lord. Then I am your friend and you walk with me. Thank you for walking and talking with me, Lord. I worship you, God, because you want to be with me. I worship you, God, because you are my righteousness and my purity and I cannot do it on my own. But because of who you are, you are the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. You are the first and you are the last. You are all these things. You did it in the beginning and you said amen at the end of the book. And Father, I worship you because of who you are. My security is in you. I worship you. My cleaning of my soul and my life, my forgiveness is in you. It's who you are. You are the God of hope. You are the God of salvation. You are the Father of all comfort, God. You give it to us. We worship you today. And whatever it is that you need to focus on on who God is today, not what you want from him, but who he is. Would you just say, I'm going to exalt you and I'm going to lift you. There are no other options. There are no other alternatives. It is in worshiping the Lord, your God. Let's exalt him. Come on.